Hey, Jane, thank you so much for coming on the Before You're Ready Summit. Hi, Emma. How are you going? Good, thank you. It's lovely Good. to chat with you face, face to face again. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. How long has it been? Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't even uh, know. I feel like time is just a blur. <laughs> I'm like, it could be six <laughs> months. It could be a year. Who knows? But yeah, yeah, well, you know, Christmas is over anyway. Oh, yeah, so. exactly. So you are a personal stylist extraordinaire. Like normally you work with a lot of high-powered, high-achieving women. You've been a fashion editor. You've been a designer you worked in TV but I'd love to hear a little bit in your own words of where you've come from a sort of short version of your journey and where you're at now um so a bit about my background obviously I don't want to bore people because sometimes you go into these things and you think oh my goodness is this like a resume no, <laughs> interview? But, yeah, yeah so people, it's interesting very uh, yeah yeah I am um, Gosh, I, funnily enough, I thought I was going to be a lawyer at one stage. So, uh, you know, I think we all watched that Le uh, Legally Blonde movie and we yeah. thought, oh, I could wear a blazer and walk around in a past suit. <laughs> but turns out you uh, just wanted the blazer, not the job. <laughs> I just, exactly, exactly. So um, long story short, I had my first year at uni uh, in law, uh, so did law school. First year of law school and I thought, Jesus, what am I doing here? You know, everyone was so hungry for... I don't you know, to get into your full year of, you know, full degree of law school, I ended up not making any friends. It was the most horrible experience of my life. And I thought to myself, you know what, what am I doing? Like, where am I at now? And what am I doing? And what am I passionate about? So I thought, cut this, took a year off, ended up interning for a designer. And um, yeah, a little designer back in New Zealand and my life changed. We travelled, I became a part of a production team, part of a design, design research team, and then I went, okay, well, this is what, where I want to see my life. You know, ended up at uni doing my fashion degree. From there, went on to styling and TV. From, you know, it just, I think when you're in the right path in whatever journey you're taking, the doors just open. You yeah. never have to break it down they just fully just you know welcome you with open arms and that was like that with fashion like i was saying the doors just opened i was in um i ended up doing um tv work uh, assisting a stylist a head stylist for a network and that was my part-time job through uni fitted around my lectures and my uni hours um and then yeah finished uni became one of the leading stylists in uh, in tv and then Roll ball rolling I was on part of a massive fashion shoot for Mind Food magazine. Met the editor. He offered me a position as a fashion editor. We launched Mind Food Style. Like it just rolled. Like I traveled the world shooting. Uh, it was just so crazy. And I think when you're at that point, I think in your early twenties, when you have so much energy, like you're just. Yeah, I I look back now and I think, how the hell did I do that? But it's just that adrenaline of, of being hungry. And I'm so glad I was always so hungry because it just propelled me. And in those, like, you know, I think from my mid-20s to my late-20s, I was just so hungry. I moved so quickly. Because people go, wow, you've done so much in your life, in your career life. I'm like, I kind of have because I was just, whenever someone said, oh, can you do this? I went, okay. Yeah. Can you do this? Oh, okay, yeah. I suppose I could. Nah, yeah. If I don't know, I'd learn, you know. Um, and then fast forward, I um, ended up um, a, a lead stylist for um, a runway, runway shows. And one of my big clients was Willow in May. Um, it was, a, at the time, a sleepwear brand based out of New Zealand. And after doing that show, they became, it sort of almost went viral, uh, what they were doing. Because I, when I style things, I try to... I, I put it, I take it out of its context. So when I did that runway um, show for them, everyone was like, who the hell is this? And why are they wearing Doc Martens down the runway? And why is the music not slipwearish? And, you know, it was kind of tested the waters a bit. And so that went viral. And then they went, the founders went, do you kind of want to come on board and be the designer? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Had you cool. done any design at that point? Like... I did, I did, but sort of very dabble, dabble here and there, consulted with brands and stuff, but not 
design a whole collection, yeah. um, not since uni. Um, and so, yeah, I took it on and it was just another roller coaster ride. Um, and then 2017, I left them be, um, uh, so that they can carry on the journey. And I kind of went, you know what, I just need to press pause on this, this train because I feel like I had, like I wasn't a, you know, was a train, a roller coaster in one. And I thought I, I got to that point where I just felt so exhausted by the whole, yes, I can do this. Yes, I can do it. You know, I was like, no, 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 hang on. What am I doing? Um, and so for the last two years, since 2017, I've just been hanging, hanging light, you know, and then now I'm getting back into it and I've decided that it's I've, for me and my creativity and my passion, it, it lies more into styling uh, for real people than you do for celebrities or sports presenters and things. I, um, you know, there's something about getting to know someone on a personal level and getting, getting them to shine, you know, in their own way. Um, so, yeah, that's where I'm at now. Amazing. 2020. Yeah, it's been <laughs> such a journey. Like you've done so, so many It's things. so weird saying 2020, isn't it? I know. It's it feels, so weird. It's, it still feels like 2018, I swear. Um, oh, but yeah. yeah, you've been through so many transitions in your career, right? Your career. I'm sure you've had more than a few moments um, when you, but you, you sort of tackled, <laughs> jumped into things before you felt ready. Like, are there any that really yeah. stand out to you? Oh, I think it was being um, offered that fashion editor job for Mindful Style. And I just thought, my goodness, you know, my, my whole aim when I, when I first started in the styling industry, it was to get into fashion styling because, you know, there's different fields that you specialize in. You either do TV, fashion or personal styling or celebrity styling. And I started off doing TV and I thought, oh, I really, really want to get into fashion. I looked over to these magazines, you know, had my whole mood board. My, my studio was always filled with like creative shoots, you know, like all the, you know, images or inspiring images. And I always thought to myself, you know what, I want one day I want to shoot for Vogue. One day I want to do this, this, that. And I had all these <laughs> post-it notes around my studio of like affirmations and things and, you know, Vogue one day or da da da, da. And I got offered that, fine, that when Michael McHugh, the editor of Mindfood Magazine, yeah. said to me, look, we've got a secret project on the go. Um, you can't tell anyone about it, but I would really love for you to be the editor, uh, the fashion editor. And I just, I, I drove home in tears. Good tears. Like the whole or bad good tears. tears. I was yeah. like, oh my God, I can't believe I just got this. Yeah. I was that's just the in best such dis- disbelief because that gave me, as a stylist, it gave me so much power. How, you know, not, not in terms of um, like being uh, egotistical, it was uh, power in being able to pull things or use, um, you know, the, the likes of Louis Vuitton, Dior, Chanel, the brands I, would, I had dreamt of using in my shoots were suddenly in my lap, knocking at my door going, what do you need? Yeah, so sounds like You know, good. and, oh. oh, I just <laughs> couldn't believe it. But, yeah, so that was, that, yeah, that was my most memorable moment. Thank yeah. You. Did yeah. you ever have any sort of self-doubt around that or like, feel you know, I haven't done this before? Like, and if so, like, how did you sort of get over that and just get in and do the job? Um, there, were, there were moments of self-doubt. I think when you look, you know, there was, I was this young newbie and, you know, I'd gotten this position within like the first six years of me in the industry. Um, there were people around me who had been doing it for 30 years, you know, and they're well on their way, you know, their mid forties, whatever they were. And, um, it was like, yeah, I was always a new kid on the block. Um, but I kind of, I think one of it go, I think I really have to credit my parents for the way they kind of brainwashed me <laughs> it was a, yeah it was brainwashing now looking back at it because my dad was always so well he's still alive so not was is um is always going you know what he was so strict with what we did like um, in terms of studying and things and getting good marks and he always said never let anyone tell you what to do 
Mm. Like never let anyone dictate what you want to do. And that sort of always stuck in my head. So when I, when I was around people that doubted me or I could feel that, I would go back to that. And he, like, I think he said it so much that even these days I kind of hear it in my head. <laughs> it's, it's almost it's like, like right in there. Yeah. So yeah, and um, yeah, I, I feel I feel a sort of like a cliche answer to that, but it's yeah. I just I have so much of him in me, yeah. um, so much of his voice just saying no. You're gonna you're gonna be someone one day. You're gonna do this. You're gonna. And he came from um, uh, his Fijian background, and we moved to New Zealand when I was fifteen. But he came from that you know, uh, from that time of like, if you want something, you've got to go for it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Great mindset. Not... <laughs> Sounds exactly. like he raised you well. <laughs> oh, yeah, he was very strict. <laughs> yeah, Still is. Like, good. I feel like that can yeah. set you up, like depending on how strict, it can kind of set you up well. But like it makes you more disciplined yeah. definitely later in life. Um, yeah. But I want to talk about this concept of doing things before you feel ready because I feel like this yeah. is very <laughs> significant <laughs> for the moment because I know you've gone through going through the process of basically relaunching your styling business, relaunching mm-hmm. your website. As you both know, there's so much that goes into like to doing that. So I want to talk mm-hmm. a little bit about that process and how it's been for you and how you're sort of overcoming this feeling of, you know, you might not necessarily feel like, ready but you know you got to get it out there <laughs> yeah <laughs> where do you start it's like a the longest piece of string ever <laughs> um yeah oh, so your question is overcoming the process of yeah of or like being, do being you ready? think that you'll that like any of us can ever really get to a point where we feel like a project is 100 percent ready to get out in the world and how do you just be like okay like i just gotta hit go on this like <laughs> uh i tell you what you'll never be ready yeah. The thing is, like, if I said I was ready, if I if I said I was gonna, if I said to myself I was gonna put myself in in those shoes where I need to be a hundred and ten percent ready before I could do styling, I would never be here. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, you know, I mean, at the moment I'm working on my website, right? So. It's been of the longest process. We've gone through design process, development, the graphic designer, the web developer, the this, the that, the checkout process, the insight, Jesus. Like how, how many things do I have to pay for to get this thing going? Yeah. And then now we're sitting on it and I can't launch it on Google unless it's got the SEO, right? Because what's the point of building a pretty website if no one knows about it? Exactly. So, um, yeah, so I... I just, I'm coming back to the, you know, I'm going to eat my, my words soon, but (laughs) I think I just need to choose which, you know, at at this point, which SEO person to go with and just go, you know what, we'll just launch it. And at one point, because you know what, I'm that sort of person within six months, I'll be redesigning their website anyway. Yeah. Because I'm a stylist and I, I, I come from a branding experience and I think for me, not for this is not for everyone else but i've always it's like visual merchandising in a shop right i believe your website your brand is your visual merchandising points right so if if someone walks in in six months they need to refresh they need to yeah so that's where i'm at i'm thinking you know what i'm just going to launch this thing tweak it later i'm a huge believer tweak it later. In get it out there and tweak later like i'm the same as you like i love rebranding i love a new beginning like i yep. get excited about that so i'm like you know just get it out there and then you know I've exactly Who blog, knows? like two Who years knows? and i'm like time for a good total rebrand <laughs> I just, I just, you know, and you know, we're doing, we've done a rebrand on our social media, on my social media. um, And that's been such a massive um, change. But yeah, I just, we're launching things on social media as we're going before we even have the website up. Because I'm just thinking, you know what, if I sit back another day, I'm actually losing money. Yeah. And, and I don't mean to sound cocky, but like, Every day that I sit back, every day someone out there doesn't have my help. That's a great way to look you at know, it because you're not thinking oh, of it in terms of, oh, I'm missing out on, I mean, it is a bit of that, but it's also like I'm adding value yeah. to people's lives. And yeah, and I'm just, I can't help and, and I'm just holding there. back on my talent, Yeah, you know? So like, yeah, 
I completely. So it's agree. just been that. It's yeah. Just, yeah. Like so we're, we're so, I said, I've set deadlines this year. I, you know, on the two weeks um, Christmas break we had, I just said, you know what, by February, I want this. By March, I want this. By, you know, end of Jan, I want this. So, so far we, we are on track. We, yeah. we are on track. So, and ask- that's even before the website's launched. I don't care about the website launching or not launching, whatever. We're going to play this game on social media and someone wants to book me, fine. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> it's just getting sometimes you just got to yep. get the bare minimum like what do people need to book my services right now you don't need the whole shebang sometimes it's nice to have that exactly but and get we can it process there, payment yeah. over you know over a bank transfer or whatever let's just get going yeah yeah exactly. so that's my right look at it yeah. and that sort of leads me to my next question do you so you sort of said you're a fan of breaking things down into deadlines do you have any sort of like Apart from that, any sort of tips for, I guess, um, for your productivity or like to make sure you don't procrastinate on things to make sure you do things when you say you're going to do them? Um, well, I think for me, a, a massive thing is stationary. <laughs> I know that sounds really like, ah, oh, I'm going stationary. But um, I've found uh, with setting deadlines for me, it's all about having that calendar. Mm. like out in the open i know we're so used to digital format now like in terms of calendar on your iphone calendar on your laptop ipad blah, blah. but unless you have it written up and stuck to a freaking wall and you're walking past that wall every day and seeing what's on there i don't think things will move for you mm. out of to be sight, honest like i yeah. exactly and i think a lot of people just go oh yeah well my phone reminds me every day yada 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 but it's also also use one swipe and you clear that thing yeah um so for me yeah i just this year has been massive into like writing things down sticking it on like a you know a wall somewhere or you know if i'm brushing my teeth i'll be able to see it so subconsciously you're plant planting that seed yeah and without knowing it you actually achieve it you know yeah, what I mean? Your subconscious the, and yeah, yeah. Yeah. So that's been helping. Um, and then obviously my diary of going, what am I doing every week? I plan, a, you know, the day before I'm always seeing what's up next and you know, who do I need to contact tomorrow? Can I do it today? With, you know, so it's the same thing everyone says, but I think for, for, for me, the notes has worked. Yeah. The post-it notes all over the place yeah just having it there it's impossible to forget it when it's like right in your face like that right in your face yeah Yeah. and Uh, uh, i know you've had times where you've worked full-time and side hustled or you know mm -hmm. when working on your business on the side how do you work on your business when you're probably exhausted from work how do you make sure you actually do the things that are going to move your business forward when you might be really tired from doing other things Oh, that's really funny because that, that's, that's where I'm at at the moment. This is my side hustle. But um, I just pick the one thing. If you're so exhausted, I would go through that list and go, okay, what's – I read somewhere one time they have got to grade things into A, B, C. A being the most important, B being means like yeah. – yeah, yeah, exactly – and I would do the A first. And the A's might be the most annoying thing you could ever do. But I feel like if you just pick one point one night and just do, sit down and do it within half an hour or an hour, you find yourself the next day doing two things. The next day you're going, oh, okay, I'm suddenly. Yeah. And also there's that thing of like it just the feels, doing your hardest. Yeah. Thing, and then it's like it's easier. Exactly. Me. Yeah. yeah, it's I'm like doing it bit by bit because it's so overwhelming. Like I sometimes come home and I, like I work from six o'clock to nine o'clock before I even have dinner. So, you know, long where do you day. Stop, where do you end? Yeah, long yeah. days, but worth it though. For when it's something worth it. love, it's totally worth it. Um, well, that's the thing. It's yeah. If you're doing something you love, is it, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Well, on that note, let's talk about personal style. So I want to ask you, do you, like, for me, I feel like style is more, it's more than just like, hey, dress. like, I feel like taking pride in your appearance and how you dress and like looking at yourself as a personal brand is kind of an act of like self-love. It's like, you're worth it. Would you sort of like, how do you sort of say that? Oh, well, yeah. I, I mean, I fully agree with that statement. I think if there's something about 
dressing up. Like I feel, you know, for me, for myself, when I put on this, when I put on this blazer to come on this interview today, I just, you know, beforehand I thought, what am I going to wear? What is going to make me feel confident and what's going to make me shine? Yeah. And people yeah, go, oh, but it's, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> stick as well, the combo. Well, you know, right? <laughs> but it just is like, what, I sort of almost feel like it's your, uh, your weapon of choice. Mm. And it's so easy to put on um, like that armor that, that, and, and, and make you, it, it changes the way you are, the way you, uh, you talk to someone the way you come across in, um, on the phone. So yeah, I, if, if you're out there and you're starting something like even say you're starting a baby wear business or, you know, like, I don't know, you suddenly thought, okay, I'm going to launch a kid's wear brand, whatever. I guarantee you, if you put on a blazer before you hop on that phone and do negotiations with the supplier, your whole tone of voice and body language will change. Yeah, definitely. How you hold And there's yourself. something about, you know what I mean? How, how, how you hold yourself. And it also gives you that confidence. And I think, yeah, so I don't know if I'm on the, on the right track with that No, question, that's really, but you put it much better yeah, than it's, I could. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's um, something about clothing that just makes you go, you know what? I own this shit. Like, I know my stuff and I don't care if anyone else tells me otherwise, if it's just me and my four walls, freaking well, but you know what? Yeah. I own this You own it, yeah. and I've got, you know, like I'm feeling really good and I will go in, you know, and it's just, it comes down to how you groom yourself. Just take pride. Like even again, it comes back to like the step by step, you know, what are you going to do this week? Okay. Maybe I'll go get that one blazer. Okay. That will change. Yeah, okay, maybe I'll go invest in this one thing. Okay, you know, it, it, it will, I guarantee you, it will change, change who you are yeah. if you just take little steps. Yeah, and would you say yeah. the power blazer is the first thing that people, if they're, you know, thinking I want to invest in my style, I want to start showing up as the best version of myself, do you think the power blazer is the best place to start? Oh, yeah, I'm all for that blazer. Yeah. <laughs> A it's blazer. So it feels powerful. Oh. It does, it does. <laughs> <laughs> this weather's think, too all over the shop. I'm like, I know. <laughs> yeah. I, something about it, I think for me, um, this is just me speaking from a design point of view as well as styling, but when you get that strong shoulder on you, that sh strong shoulder uh, shoulder line, you feel like your, your stance just goes like this. Mm -hmm. I think this automatically you feel, yeah, and it doesn't matter if you can afford like a Zara blazer compared to Hugo Boss blazer or like a Prada. It doesn't matter. Just go out, whatever you can afford, get your first one, even if it's a black one, and start little. Just get into the habit of even wearing a T-shirt underneath and a blazer and a pair of jeans to go to your meeting and I, it will change you. Like, do that and compare it with you just wearing something. Yeah, just show up in t-shirts and jeans. Yeah, it makes a yeah. lot of difference. Uh, yeah, and honestly, like, this is my this is my weapon of choice. Yeah, this and then second is my red lip. Yes, like, always that red lip together. It's and then third are my glasses. And yeah. then I mean, I obviously needed to see, but <laughs> at helps. the same time, I feel <laughs> oh. Yeah, and it's like your signature yeah. look as well. Like I, that's yeah. I think I wanted to ask you, and you sort of touched on this. Like, at what point do you think in someone's career or like building their personal brand or starting a business, should they really invest in their personal style? Like, it sort of ties into this idea before you're ready. Do you think it's ever too early to, you know, start trying to build your signature style? I say start as early as you can. Start when you start thinking about the idea. <laughs> if you're even thinking yeah. about it, it's like sign that you should do it <laughs> yeah exactly um i would say even if even if you're sitting down to think about oh you know what this business is going to look like or what you know just pop out and go for a shop or start putting together a mood board of who you think you you know what what you think you are and who you you know in in terms of a brand 
be, or even go out, like I said, go out and get your first blazer. Yeah. Because, you know, even when you're working at the first initial stages and you, you show up to your study table or your bedroom or your dining table dressed the part, you feel a lot more confident, a lot more polished. It, things do move quicker when you're in that, um, in that frame of mind. So, yeah, I, I would say that's the first thing you tackle. Yeah. I mean, not like to a large extent, go change your whole wardrobe, but just invest in your first power blazer. Invert, you know, just, yeah. just one piece, one and piece. Some momentum. Piece. Once you do that, you're yeah. like, this feels good. Like I should, you know, be yeah. more pieces like that. Yeah. But it can be slow. It doesn't have to all be at once. You don't have to, like you said, get rid of your entire wardrobe and then no, start just, over. just one, piece. one in, one in, one out, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, like that one piece can lead on to other things like accessorize with a good, like a, a nice necklace. Again, doesn't have to cost, cost much um, and build up from there. But once you, yeah, like I keep coming to this, once you show up and you feel confident, the whole world just, it just rolls over. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I used to go, like, I'm, I'm notorious for, for showing up because I think I learned this very earlier on when I was interning for the fashion designer. So after, after law school. And every time, like, I was an intern, but every day I, I came showing up. Yeah. You know, I had my whole look put together. I styled, I pre-styled outfits the day before, before, you know, showing up the next day. And it just changed. Like it, it's, it, it also told people how serious I was, you yeah. know, like, I mean, I, I love this place. I want this to work. I'm in business. Um, yeah. So it, again, I, I come back to, I mean, I was, it was very early on. But I was I was showing up. I I didn't care if I didn't. I was just an intern at that point. Well, that leads um, me perfectly into what I was going to ask you about this idea of yeah, like you should dress not for the job you have, but the dress you want. Are you a believer in that? Oh yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> the job, yeah, if yeah, dress for the job you want. And and I I what well, when was I not ever dressing up for the job that I wanted? I can't remember. Or Even just now, like as who you want to be. It doesn't have to be the job. It can be like yeah, dress as the person that you want to be. Funny though that we because you said to me before, oh, um, this is your side hustle, blah blah blah. You do work full time, uh, you know, um, in sales uh, in other places. Because people always say to to me when I'm in that in that zone or full time zone, they go, oh wow, you're always so well put together. Yeah. Like you're always this, you're always polished, you're always this. And I don't, like subconsciously, I don't really, like it just comes naturally to me to put yeah. things together. So I just show up like how I want to show up. But it changes, you know, when, um, so long story short, what I do now is I basically in sales and I'm dealing with interior designers and architects all day, right? If I showed up to their office looking like I've just rolled out of bed. Do you reckon they'll take me seriously? Yeah, exactly. No, yeah. no. So it goes hand in hand. I feel like if, you, if you're not ready for the job that you want to have and you're working towards that, maybe show up in what that job looks like because it then reflects positively on what you're doing now. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah, it's exactly. sort of... It goes full circle and I just, yeah, I, I come back to a lot of people just, I, I think it becomes a, like almost like a chore, like a, like a task. Yeah. But I challenge you and I, I'm a big believer again, kind of like full on, just take it on, take it on dress for who you want to be, show up, yeah, just, just show up. Actually, probably the more yeah. you do it, the more it just becomes part of exactly. you. As long as you're dressing yeah. you know, in a way that is still authentic to yourself. Like you don't want to be trying to be someone that you don't want to be, but, you know, it's finding that, per you know, thing that's true to you mm -hmm. that can fit Absolutely. your lifestyle as well. Yeah, yeah, 
Absolutely. I think a lot of people are busy trying to find who they are in other people as well. Like there's so much of that now on social media and things, but I feel, and, you know, if I'm, I'm always open for a conversation with people, but I think if you just sit down for a second or just go away for a weekend and just go, who am I? And what am I trying to achieve out there? Like what's, what does success look like to me? Yeah. You know what I mean? Does success mean that I need to look like Kim Kardashian or does success mean I want to be, I just want to look like myself or I want to be the best version of who I, who I'm currently am. Just kind of put some things out in the open, put some words out there and yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll find it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Great advice. I was going to ask you what would be your sort of final word of advice for someone who's been thinking about investing in their personal style. Um, but like, uh, they're just like, Oh, I just don't know if I'm ready yet. I don't know if I have the like ready to invest the money into it. What would your like final word of advice be to them? I say, stop thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Cause the more you think about it, the more you go, Oh, but, Oh, but what if so-and-so things thinks this of me or what if my parents think you know or what if my partner thinks this? just do it like just just do it whether it starts with one piece of garment or the whole wardrobe just do it because I tell you it's it's so important um and that's yeah so I my my advice would be like Nike says just do it what the worst could happen? what's the yeah what, what's the worst that could happen you yeah. go return those clothes or you give it to the Salvation Army, or you yeah. change your whole look in a year. It's just clothes. Yeah. Like, it's not, you're not building a house. Death. It's you're not, not a putting death a sentence. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah, exactly. It's, it's so many people so just super analyze things, you know? It's like, yeah, well, like just go God, if it. you don't like the blazer, just change it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's not rocket science. <laughs> yeah. But there is it's such an not- art to what you do. And yeah, I really yeah. appreciate you showing all your wisdom. Where can everyone find you on social media? Where will they be able to find your website? And do you have anything particular that you'd like to direct them to? Well, so um, social media, we're massive on so- Well, when I say we, I mean me. Uh, on social media, I'm on Jane Mo, so J A N E. J-A-N-E-M-O-W is my handle. Massive on Instagram. Facebook, mm, not so oh. much. Only because, you know, Who is trying to... Facebook? I, I, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. And I just, you know, what I do is very visual. Yeah. And very bite-sized um, sort of videos of behind the scenes of what I'm working on. So I think Instagram is, is, is a really good platform for that. Um, so the packages that I offer um, are very simple. I've got three simple packages. I don't try to overwhelm people because this is not rocket science. Um, so, yeah, I've got my com- uh, a complete makeover, your personal shopping and your virtual styling. So I also do that via what we're doing right now with clients. I feel I can connect with more people around the world plus interstate doing this. Um, so, yeah, that's all available on my social media on Instagram. If you just scroll through the highlight stories, you'll be able to see a uh, – a folder specifically for packages. Yeah, so we'll put links to, to all of this in the description. Yeah. Well. So and uh, people, my website. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. It's it might be out by the time this comes up. <laughs> it comes out. Yeah, exactly. So if anything, it'll just be my name again. Yeah, it's easy to remember. Exactly. They just keep checking. <laughs> exactly. Just, just go on my social media. Just, You'll like, be fine. Just, Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jane, for sharing all your wisdom. And I'm feeling super inspired to go and up level my own style. Like, so I'm hoping, exactly. I'm sure everyone else listening to this later sounds, will feel the cool. same. 2020, yeah. like, time 2020. to step into style. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, awesome. thank you so Thanks for having me.